Give me the grill, bro. Give me the grill. Pass Give the me grill. the grill. Pass the Put it up here so people can top. see it. Put it carefully without with the without the top falling off. Holy shit, guys. Oh, wow. This isn't rocket science. You Great just use handles. both the hands. It's Reed's weak ass ribs. Okay. Well, here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> and I hey, this pains me. And they are not mathematically eliminated. They might be the best team to ever get cooked this early. I mean, some of the things that the I hope it's who I think it is. I don't want to say who it is. Uh, you ready to open it up? Yeah. Okay, open it up. <laughs> <laughs> Ah! Oh shit! The tape's not holding. But uh, oh <laughs> we're gonna, man, we're gonna roast this thing. We're gonna we're gonna get some. Uh, they're eating the cats. They're eating the cats. <laughs> they are the eating. Bangles, the Bengals are probably cooked. Like there's no, they're cooked. They'd have to win. Here's out. what's crazy. They, if they're listen, not, listen. they're not cooked if they don't win, if they win out. But like who who's expecting that? Because they invent new ways to lose games. Oh man, they have oh, the passing man. league leader, the touchdown leader. Uh, the receiving touchdown leader, they have a sack leader, and they're what four and seven. It's incredible, it's, man. It's it, crazy how they're losing games. And it's not even like, listen, I want to say the head coach is fucking up because he is. He's making game decisions, in my opinion, that are like he doesn't know where he is in the game sometimes, which to me is like, you can be a great play caller. They're not as bad as some other coaching decisions that we've discussed. No question, on this, on but this the, illustrious pod. Yeah, but they're the, just paying for it more. But the know? subtleties of the mistakes you make, like what about Jamar Chase calling them out? Jamar Chase, that's not a good beep, thing. Beep, but also, beep, like yeah. if if I'm the kind of guy that like you feel like you got to stick up your employer to get paid, like fuck them all. Exactly. Okay? But but I will say this: as I watched the fourth quarter, I felt like the Chargers passed the baton to the Bengals for years now. It's been charging. Oh. Now it's bangling or bungling. And it felt like all in one, it was poetic. Sometimes the NFL is like poetry. Sometimes the NFL is like, it just, it just makes a lot of damn sense. And everything happens. There, there were narratives on narratives on narratives. Like as this is happening, Herbert has this seven, in, seven pass incompletion streak. And you're like, here we go again. And now everybody that wants to say he's trash is going to be able to say he's trash for the, the rest of the year or until they get in the playoffs and win a damn game, which like wouldn't be true. Or, huh? That seems like a that seems like a Dr. Fax take to me. No, no, I'm not talking about you. No. I don't I'm think he serious. had that I'm take. Just trying to, I'm just trying to poke the bear a little bit. See if no, you, uh -uh. If you, I said early. I'm telling chef. you. Herbo is a dog. No, Herbo's a, a dog, bro. He's no, a dog. He is. Dog. And to okay. what you what you just said, like it's funny because it switched where the Bengals used to be the team that you don't want to play, and now the Chargers is the team that you don't want to play. No, you don't because they have a lot. They have a lot going on both sides of the ball. But I will say this: they tried their best to Charger in the second half. And like, if it's not for those McPherson missed kicks, I worry the narrative like on Justin Herbert is bigger than ever, which would have sucked because mm -hmm. I thought he was lights out for a lot of the game. And I also thought they asked him to do a lot in the second half. Okay, like they abandoned the run game, which to me was a little curious with a lead. But when your guy's that efficient, I get it. Um, now, this is their first field goal win, like a three-point or less win in like 10 games that it came down to a field goal. I don't think they've won a close game in forever. So this was huge for Justin. It's affirming for the coaching staff. It's affirming for the culture. It's affirming for the team. And on the other end of it, the Bengals are in the fucking Weber grill with a with an apple. And I don't know why they put an apple. You want it in, in why do they put an apple in oh, the flavor? Flavor. I figured. You flavor. You want to know something what? that you're probably gonna be surprised to hear? What? The Bengals, since they do need to win out, yeah. They have a bye week. What a perfect time for a bye week right now. Oh, it's the it's the perfect, but the worst too. It's the perfect. It's the perfect. If you reset, it would have been better like five games ago and then they would be in this situation <laughs> you know what i'm saying no for think sure. about it from that from that perspective for sure. but, but look at that look at all this chargers second half mismanagement i have started 27 to 6 on fourth and goal last night i'm like getting ready to go to bed mm. i'm like going to bed during a sunday night football game i'm in bed not so fast my friend. and mentor brings the house and leaves a guy <laughs> on jamar chase and you're like oh here we go they come out, they throw the ball twice consecutively, three times, took a sack on third down. You're like, what are we doing? And you could just feel it. There's a Herbert fumble. There's a roughing that negates an interception. Slater gets Slater holds Hendrickson, and they got a punt, and they give him the ball back with five minutes to go. You're like, I know how this ends. But the Bengals missed the two field goals, and I hate in a game that's played by football players, and we're going to evaluate 
these two football teams, it comes down to a guy who plays fucking video games during practice. I'm not saying McPherson does. I'm saying they all do. And, and well, that hey, Chris, there there was a lot of kicker issues, and we were t- we talked about this mm. on the pod last week with daylight saving time. They're I don't off. Know what it was, but the it's fall. Dude, back. They're off, and think about how good they were at the beginning beginning of the season. Dudes were hitting like sixty five yarders, like it was nothing. Now you have Justin Tucker, who's actually my hollow man this week. Mm. We'll get to that a little bit. But he missed two kicks. He's no longer the most efficient kicker in the history of the NFL. McPherson missed kicks. The dude from the Browns couldn't kick to fucking save his life. Dustin Hopkins. Um, Bass. Yeah. Bass missed a kick that uh, the extra point it could have ended up being very big at the end of the game if things would have gone differently. Like, it feels like there were a ton of kickers that were just spraying the ball well, everywhere. Well, number one, the weather's starting to change, but some of these kicks are indoors. And so I do think yeah. our fallback theory actually works here. They're tired. Because, you know, like yeah. people are all <laughs> well, tired. And then you go out west, well, and it's almost midnight. Like, you know, ahead of that game, yeah. McPherson should be kicking it at 1130 at night. I don't know if he's like a well, this is what I think, guy. Chris. He probably is. I, I, yeah. He's probably at for 9.30 sure. yeah, bedtime guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like, Well, Chris, this is kind of what I was thinking, though, I, and I want to hear what Dr. Fax has to say about that. I think kickers in the NFL, like league-wide, are just kind of on notice after last week with the 49ers. I think they're kind of running scared from the likes of Debo. I think that's kind of got oh, you them think they, they're shook uh, a little. What happened? I think they're a little <laughs> shook because of you know that physical confrontation. That's the, that's the most physical confrontation a kicker has ever experienced. You know, So I think you know the kickers group check you know there's only 32 33 kickers in the nfl i think they're all kind of talking about that i think they're a little nervous and i think that's affecting their performance here's one thing i wanted to bring up now we're bet mgm people and there's a there's a dolph lundgren commercial with FanDuel where he's karate kicking lobster and it's actually like it's not the worst commercial um <laughs> and he's talking about you know bet the eagles he's saying they got a kicker he never misses is is this Russian interference? It is because he's Ivan Drago. Yeah, he's mad about the Philly. <laughs> He'll always thing. be he's Drago to the statue. me. He's yeah. jinxing Jake <laughs> yeah. Elliott, and so I think Philly fans should be thinking about this. Like we need yeah. to get that damn commercial off TV. Can we buy that commercial out? Yeah. Um, now I will say this: there, <laughs> as bad as I don't feel for kickers sometimes, it can be one of the hardest things in the world to watch a man melt down on national tv and it happens and when it happens it's like a dog that that is like you know when the dog goes blind and like the right leg doesn't work and you're just like man this is, it's kind of it just like, all happens at once it all happens at once and it feels like watching yeah, justin tucker cared. and mcpherson and like jake and like i i believe in jake still but but yeah. it's just hard to watch these guys damn. fumble over the thing that looks so easy for them all the damn time. But You're at the inside. same time, they're kickers, so it's like fuck them. Like just yeah, that's what I'm more, saying. It's you know? it's a total. Well, it's it's like a weird, weird feeling I I have. Should I hate yeah, them? I'm Should I laugh at them? Not oh. when I had the Bengals. You know who else I could say fuck them to? What? And my hollow man this week? Yeah, is going to the refs, the referees. Like they're bad right they, now, bro. They like are. how bad right how now. do you not know the rules? Like Trey on the, on the, Trey Hendrickson, he gets that horse collar. It's every, in the pocket. It's it's in the pockets in the rules that when it's in the pocket on the quarterback, it is not a penalty for the refs immediately not to know that and for whoever's listening to new york and whoever calls in for them to immediately say pick up that flag it's not a flag and let it go i don't understand what's going on let me let me lend a little the devil needs no advocate especially in a circumstance where a pass rusher gets a flag (laughs) and by the way that that was a grounding before the half wasn't it and that should be a runoff Okay, so all that matters. And when you look at the kick in Chicago and Pat McAfee cried foul this morning, he's I trust him. He's one of the best punters of all time. He knows the fucking rules. Okay. He says that should be a penalty everywhere, all over the league. He was talking about the A gap penetration. Yeah. They're Mm -hmm. blowing calls. But here's what I'll say about the Trey Hendrickson thing. Okay. At first I was like, come on. And then Trey like threw him down. Like, I'm just telling you. I'm not yeah. saying it's the right call, but I've been around the quarterback as much as anybody in the room. And I'm mm-hmm. just telling you, I'm I'm super nervous if I'm the guy that does this to the quarterback by the collar. Yeah. They didn't call it a horse collar, did they? I'm not sure. They called it roughing. 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 Okay. And so for me, I'm looking at him saying like, and Trey had an offsides where he got a little, like Trey wanted that thing bad last night. You could just tell yeah, he's he rushing his ass off. It's a, it's a ticky tack damn call. But when you put yourself in those positions, you just said it. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. They're, 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 officiating has gotten worse. 
And what's what's terrible is replays, the vantage point we have, I always say this, has outpaced the officiating. And so they've always been probably shaky as hell. You know how many how many calls our parents generation of refs missed? <laughs> like they were just like, yep, end of the game. <laughs> like that was the worst call ever. Not a fumble at all. The tuck rule, like things like that. Yeah. Just so um Mary. and there was a tuck rule uh kind of Drake deal May. yesterday with Drake May. Yeah, the fumble. <clears throat> yeah. Remember that fumble though? There's a fumble for the Broncos read that was very perplexing. The fumble it was, yeah. It was, that was on a fourth pass, down. It was decided it was a terrible fumble. call in the end zone on on the in the Minnesota in, game. Yes. Yeah. The the guy for the the Titans, the backer for Mike the Brown. Titans, Mike Brown blows up the I mean, perfect hit perfect hits the only place you can hit the guy yep. and take the ball off is perfect so anyways before we go down this road on the refs i just want to say it's not just, my hollow man goes to mcpherson i can i was going to give him worse plane ride but the jags exist mm. okay so <laughs> i cannot imagine mcpherson on that ride home i mean he just went to bed like when i woke up this morning he just went to bed <laughs> Those are terrible. Yeah. Those flights back east after a game like run. that, if you miss two field goals. And it was like he missed them. He And the succession of missing those field goals, it was to the point where like people on the side were like, come on, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like usually you're like, ah, oh, you know, and they, you said it. It's the only position where they pat you on the head when you do something wrong. I and last it. night it was like I the, the sideline was just like enough, man. <laughs> enough bro <laughs> so it wasn't just m missed field goals it's the ineptitude in the red zone early it's chase brown who played great you know little moments like chase oh. brown not cutting that ball up you know like being behind the sticks in a big possession you know it's it's a jamar chase drop it's a mike Hil mike hilton dropping a pick six we're talking about the bet they're not in the grill so and when you when you want to talk about what what makes a bad team bad because they're the best bad team i've ever seen and it's two sides sure. of the same coin, so it really doesn't matter because the net the the net is mediocrity. Okay, you 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 miss a bunch of hidden plays. That's what bad teams do. They miss a bunch of little opportunities to to right the ship. They can do all the spectacular shit. They can go fourth and f two bombs over Baghdad to Higgins. They can Higgins is strong with the ball the whole night. Burrow is outrageously good. It's shaking off Derwin James, like, and they missed the face mask on that one by the letter of law with the new rule. But the whole thing is when you miss little plays like that, Mike Hilton picked, and he played heroically at times late in the game for an older guy in man coverage, but obviously he got cooked by McConkey when it mattered. The, the, it's, it's the third down before the Chargers get the ball back and win the game. I thought Burrow had Tanner Hudson underneath. And there were a number of moments in this game where I'm like, just take the profit, complete the ball, and keep the clock running. They had so many opportunities to run the clock down and win the game, and they just they just fumbled. And uh, they go to Burton in too many situations. You know, Perryman's on the sideline for a lot of the second half, and I'm like, just run the damn ball a little bit more. I understand, like, you've been in this mode of feverishly trying to kick the doors in for 30 minutes because you're down 21 points, but there are times, too, where you got to take – and this is what I'm saying about Taylor not knowing where he's in the game. Do you remember the Ravens game in, in Cincinnati where they get in field goal range to win the game and they get conservative? Okay, that wasn't the time to be conservative. This was the time to be conservative in some spots and run a little clock and make them use timeouts and take the profit. You know, that Tanner Hudson play, that haunts you a little bit. I don't know if Burrow saw that at the moment. He definitely knows now. But – um, I think it was Burrow playing that good and Herbert out dueling him in prime time feels like he exercised the demons. You know, this is one of those games where it's like, okay, that that 400 pound gorilla is off my back now. Like I am no longer the person that blows, you know, end of game situations and you damn near did, but he had the ball last basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, uh, and he hits that out and up to McConkey and, and uh, you know, it was just an incredible game, period. And it's a shame that that one of those two teams is going to the playoffs. And the other team's the other team's gonna be at home. I asked this question earlier. I said, when's the last time an offense like this was at home in January? I said, I said Matt, look it up for me. What was the team you named? Twenty ten Chargers. Twenty ten Chargers. Mm -hmm. It's more poetry. Mm -hmm. It's more mm -hmm. poetry. They had one of the best offenses in the league, maybe the best offense in the Second league. Second best offense in the and league. And they didn't go to the playoffs. And Lost I said a couple of close games. I said, Hold on a minute, players, one more. 2013 <laughs> off the top of my head 2012 because the year after spags got fired in st louis as my head coach 
and this is what's amazing about the NFL. This guy is a legend as a D coordinator. There was a year where he went down to New Orleans and they couldn't stop uh, like anything. And they were the worst defense in the league. I mean, it was like historic bad. They went seven and nine. They had the best offense in the league and they don't go to the playoffs. And so now you're up there on the wall with these teams and you're wasting Joe Burrow's prime. Hey. And I don't know if they're ever going to fire that coach. I don't know that we should be talking about firing that coach because at the end of the day, the reason they're here is largely the defense this year. But um, it's not it's not insignificant that he's coaching for the Bengals because the Bengals do not want to eat up the back end of guys' contracts. You know, they don't fire coaches. And it's noticeable. Jamar Chase was saying that in the locker room yesterday. He said, ask the coaches. I only play football on the field. Ask the coaches. I don't call the plays. But, guys. Brutal. If um, you believe in conspiracies like me, you would have known it was written in stone that the Chargers are going to win this game. The brothers, the brothers' theory is still alive. Still alive. And guess what? It'll be alive for next week too because they play each other. That means one they of them has to lose. win. They're Unless it, if they tie, Ooh, if they that tie. would be a real <laughs> wrenching still, thing. You never said they can't. <laughs> I, I never great. said that. Lose. I said they can't. Bet on lose. the tie, Nate. I know you love to chase some of these bets. <laughs> bet on the tie. What are the odds? Bet on the hey, tie. we might we might have hit three really good. Theories so far this year. We had the the Lions hangover. We had the fall Ball back, back. Uh, and now we've got the uh, well. You started it with the Harbaugh. The theory. Harbaugh. So let me say this one one last thing about this game. Bevel Conway. Mm. I mean, if this game was mm. played outdoors, mm. just I mean, like uniform porn. Mm. And uh, I got to say, like this is the Bengals, maybe their best get up. The yeah. orange pants is great. They just they, everybody looked great out there last night. Good job. And um, Joe Burrow. I actually better, had an anti bevel. Joe, Joe Burrow better not be Bo's drip king. But keep going. What, uh, what, I had what? an anti bevel, and it is related to Joe Burrow. It's just I'm I can't I'm getting this is Joe Burrow is playing great. He's got what twenty seven touchdowns, four picks. He's leading the league in passing, and every week we see him sitting dejectedly on the bench and it feels like a wide shot like a 0. 0.5 oh he looks he's like so no one around him and he looks so dejected so flat so and like, not flat yeah. like like i'm giving up but he just looked like i i was sitting there thinking i don't care how bad my day is i might not i might not want to be joe burrow how hard is that to say like i don't want to be joe burrow how great would it be to be joe burrow but like watching him on the sideline there it's like he's trapped mm -hmm. like that feeling is trapped it's like bro like i'm playing my my heart out dude i'm playing at an mvp level he'd be in the conversation if not for the fact that this damn great. team is so bad and what more can he do which calls into question you know evaluating the mvp award the way we do because like if they won more games he'd be the mvp but do nothing different you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, he's he's the only QB since the merger to lose three games in a season with 300 plus passing yards, three plus TDs, and zero interceptions. Brady has done that twice in his career. Wow. Burrow's done it three times. This now year. here, some some talking head is going to say oh, it's Burrow's fault, and we've had some people. I mean, organizations. Hey, Chris fault. Canny's my dude. He taught me how to two gap at Virginia. That's my guy. First lev sled I ever hit. Chris Canny's standing behind me. He goes, oh, "You might be all right." <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget it. I was like, oh, cool. But, but I, I totally disagree with his take. I totally disagree with his take that he kind of held on to for a while this year was like, Burrow's the problem. Burrow's <laughs> far from the problem, bro. Yeah, Burrow looked cool as hell entering the stadium, facts. Like, I take issue with that. He looked good, man. It's, Who, it's what really he, what cool. was he wearing? Oh, he was wearing he the Kamala. He little crop. He was wearing yeah. the same the blue, yeah. a, cro a crop yeah, top the baby suit blue jacket. Crop top, wide Wide it was the I same like, outfit, dude. bro. Exactly. It was, like it was the same look. Gen Z. That's that's pure Gen Z right there. <laughs> oh, hey, you I, just wouldn't get it, man. You're not 33 like me. You're not a young buck, right? Bro, you do have you some, have some outfits. Styles. You got some fits, boy. You got well, some love it, love it while it lasts, <laughs> Bo. You have four more years so you catch up with me, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, just wait till you. Then I'll be up old and there. wise and firing off sage old takes. Sage internet. takes, it's like you, baby. <laughs> but their their playoff chances swung twenty eight percent with those kicks. Mm -hmm. It's guys inside playing video <laughs> games and shooting pool. the The sport is I I the haven't sport can McPherson. be really cruel. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the sport can be. But really I don't cruel. like him ever since he stayed out for that halftime show. Oh I, yeah, I, you know I've that's bothered me for years, man. It's like <laughs> who I, did that? Who yeah. did that? Uh, Dude, I don't like talk that. about it. That's, that's about always it, who, who did that, Bo? The kicker Evan stayed McPherson, out for the halftime yeah. show. I don't even remember who it was. <laughs> it was, um, it was Snoop Dogg, it was Dr. Dre, Eminem. Yep. Yeah. Kendrick. 
And it was a big thing at the time. It's like, yeah, I agree, man. Like, go, you're here to win the fucking Super Bowl, all right? You're not here to watch the halftime show. Remember when we thought that quarterbacking was like, oh, all those guys left. Phillip Rivers is gone. Eli Manning has gone. Obviously, Brady and, and Manning. But, like, Brady and Manning we have uh, in the next game, in my opinion. Like, that's your Brady and Manning now. I mean, like, it took a while for Peyton to win a damn Super Bowl. Okay, we've got... Joe Burrow, we've got Justin Herbert, we got Jared Goff, we have Lamar Jackson. I should have put him sooner, but like, and if I'm forgetting a damn guy, forgive Bo me. Nicks. Bo Nix. <laughs> <laughs> Bo <laughs> best word. And by the way, QB. this quarterback class might be really good. Oh, yeah. I'm just uh, the way Bo's coming along, and we'll get to Bo Nix in yeah. a little bit. So the NFL's alive and well, bro. Alive and well. We just got to fix some of the officiating. We are back. And some of the damn uniforms. <laughs> we are back. Always, so, the NFL's always been back, man. It's always. always. Been, Chris, those guys you're talking about, like the superpower quarterbacks right now, mm -hmm. they all lost this weekend. Yeah. No. Holmes lost. Bro lost. Except um, for except for uh, our guy, Josh Allen. Well, mm. obviously, Josh Allen. Are we? So let's talk about was, it are, are, are we? we and Lamar Jackson lost. All the best AFC quarterbacks lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we? We're 100% throwing the stamp on the Bengals. Cooked. I'm like, I, I'm 10% they're not cooked. You're heating up the uh, the iron? <laughs> I'm but I'm 90% they're cooked. How's that for a... Can we can we look at their thing? Because I look that at for, this... I start walking your way. You start walking mine. They have 10%. Their, their current playoff odds are 10%. 10%. Depends what you look at. The athletic yeah. has them at 22%. So look, they, Listen, have, look they have the, the Steelers. Schedule, look, though. they have Steelers twice. Yep. But look, the next game after the bye is the Steelers. Cowboys. Probably probably the hardest game yep. that they have to play. If they win that, they if, if they win that. Yeah, I think they can beat the Steelers. Yes. Yeah. Like, I think they could beat every team. That's the sick part about it. And that's this. the sick. It's yeah. just like, bro, like the way you evaluate most teams, it just doesn't apply to it them. It doesn't. But because, for them, they find ways to lose games. And I'm games. so glad you said it the one time because this whole time with this thing where I was like, I'm planting my flag on the Bengals. Last year it was the Chiefs. And I was like, oh, gangbusters. And then this year I'm going to do it again with the Bengals. And you said it like a month in. You were like, bro, like this is the rightest you've ever been and still been wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even feel wrong. Like, I, you know, like sometimes when I have a take and like at the end of the day, you're like, oh, this is embarrassing. I'm yeah. not even it's not my fault. It's their fault. You know what I mean? And the it's irony, their fucking the, fault. The irony of the way this schedule <laughs> sets up and I don't even want to put this out there, but yeah. I'm going to say it because it's probably yeah. going to happen. The Bengals, if they're running the tables, they can ruin my Broncos bet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> if the Broncos are on you win eight, just ruined looking for win nine. I'm going to tell you what just ruined your Broncos bet. That kick last the, week. No, the next game we're about to talk about. Okay. Buffalo, Kansas City, because now it's a race. Yeah. Now it's a race.